Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, there's a lot of things to go over, so let's jump right in. First up, PayPal is said to be in talks to buy the cryptocurrency exchange BitGo. And one thing to note is that it says to buy crypto firms, plural, meaning that PayPal is looking to make major moves in this space also. We need to take a look at a report from eToro, which talks about what moves the prices of crypto assets, which is going to flow into the Fidelity Digital Assets Investment Thesis, where we take a look at what exactly is driving this market, and it's all news, data, artificial intelligence. And what it all comes down to is if you can be in the know faster than anybody, you can make spectacular moves, like the ones I was notified today about, and how AI, data analytics, and news alerts is going to push this market and how you can get notified of the same things that the big institutional players get notified about. So before we get into all that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is the 23rd. It was Friday. Congratulations. We made it. And uh, it's been a pretty good week, although we've seen a little bit of slippage, but not surprising for what is going on. If you're living under a rock and you're not in the cryptocurrency markets, uh, just know that PayPal is making fantastic moves and they're going to be selling, buying, trading cryptocurrency digital assets. And for a lot of people, it's already on their app right now. I had a couple of subscribers send me their screenshots. So uh, things are moving fast. Anyhow, Bitcoin down almost 2% for the day, but we had a massive run up from up 12% for the week. Ethereum is down a little bit, but again, massive run up. Uh, tether's tether, nobody cares. XRP down a little bit, but hey, still at 25 cents, it's not bad. Bitcoin cash down a little bit, chain link down a little bit, everything's down a little bit, but yesterday was just one of those monster days. Last two days have been great. News really does drive everything that's uh not everything but a lot of things that's going on in crypto and digital assets and this is just one indicator this was huge news and i thought it's going to actually uh, propel us into 2021 so paypal is going to be uh buying selling trading bitcoin ethereum bitcoin cash and litecoin so interesting snub of xrp but hey what are you gonna do didn't want it and then uh, let's see if there's anything majorly crazy down here 6.2 down for dash that's interesting Synthetics down 5%. Urine is up 3%. Well, great job for urine. Although uh, it is down from a high of like almost 40 grand. So just saying. And then uh, oof, 11% for Filecoin. I know there was a issue with the miners, but it looks like there might be turned around. But uh, I, that's very volatile. Anyway, that's about it. So expect uh, dips and valleys and peaks and troughs uh, over the next couple months because things are about to get dicey with the presidential election. But I think after November, December, I think we should be a little bit smoother and especially going to 2021, but we will see. All right, let's jump to today's top story. So first up, uh, PayPal is looking to buy firms, not a firm, not an exchange, but uh, you know, firms, just a little acquisition for PayPal. And uh, one of those is going to be BitGo. And this is what we talked about yesterday. And I had talked, I had said, you know, it's interesting that PayPal is getting into the game, but you know, who's going to custody all of these digital assets? Because uh, if you were like MicroStrategy, you just partner up with somebody else. If you were like Square, you build it from the from the ground up. And I thought they would do one of those two, but again, I was wrong. And uh, PayPal just said, hey, we're just going to buy BitGo. So BitGo was the first U.S. crypto firm to secure broker-dealer approval, transfer agent registration, and trust company recognition, allowing it to provide custody, that's the big word, and record-keeping services. So instead of them just you know dragging their feet and going, eh, we'll get to it, PayPal's like, you know what? We don't want to build it, and we don't want to partner. We'll just buy somebody. <laughs> and that's how it goes with big businesses that have a lot of ton of money. And maybe... Uh, they're just looking at the future and going, you know what? This is a multi-trillion dollar industry. We need to get in this now. We need to be, we, we're we really a bunch of laggards uh, and just kind of uh, dragging along. So let's uh, let's pick up the pace, boys. What is interesting though, is that the this story, this price action really doesn't move much. I'm, I mean, PayPal was the big story. This is just uh, secondary. So, I mean, for us, this is huge. But for the masses, they don't care. They're like, we don't we, we don't care. Unless, unless Zell comes out and says, hey, we're also doing the same thing. But that's the great thing about being in the know and being really entrenched in this industry. We see moves like this and it just gives us fuel because while everybody is sleeping out there, the the, the masses, uh, we are preparing. We are preparing for what is about to happen. It is going to come in waves. It is going to be enormous and it's going to be bigger than 2017. I can guarantee that. So when all these things are happening, it just says, hey, it's time to, to really you know get going about what is happening. And I don't know what you're going to do. But for me personally, I have increased my dollar cost average positions. I'm putting a little bit more money in. Not everything, 
but uh, I do see big things in the horizon. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. So next up, eToro, what moves the prices of crypto assets? And this was a report that I actually missed, and this was recommended to me by Josh Frank, CEO of the Thai, the data analytics firm, um, because the whole thing I'm always interested in is like what really moves uh, the industry. And I've always thought it was news. I always thought it was sentiment. I always thought it was emotion, just like everything that really, you know, uh, governs our life. Look, in sales and marketing, uh, decisions are made by emotion and they are backed up by data. That's just how it works. So this report is super long. It's 45 pages. I'm going to condense it into two, uh, which is like three paragraphs. So the first one is going to be page 10. So let me scroll all the way down. Oh, nailed it. Great. So it talks about what moves the prices of crypto. So they took Trump's famous tweet where he says, hey, Trump says, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptos, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. So eToro said, OK, we'll take that bet. We'll see if that's really true. And they hired, really partnered up with uh, the Thai. Thai is that data analytics firm. Uh, they have this thing called SIG Dev or Significant Developments. All right, got to work on that name, but whatever. Uh, it's a platform that ingests real-time info from over 1,500 primary sources, uh, blogs, forums, SEC filings, central bank announcements, Chinese publications, that's crazy, court cases, regulatory uh, media sources, exchange blogs, APIs, and a ton of other stuff, right? And because it uses AI, it's able to categorize information that would be a little bit missed. Like they can take uh, for what it might be like, say, NEO is related to NEO the crypto or NEO the Canadian Stock Exchange. So with AI, they can disseminate that and give it more weight and they can actually pump out a recommendation of what's going to happen in the market. So that's a lot of data points. And they took all this information and they said, okay, well, what actually moves the market and they said well this is what it is all the things we just talked about and what really makes a massive improvement and i'll just break this all down is listing and partnership announcements have immediate large positive influences on the price and that makes sense right if you get a listing for whatever it is on coinbase pro or another listing on uh, binance of course it's going to go up the big thing is getting those notifications and finding the information fast enough before all the hedge fund and institutional investors get up there and they just run up the price that's the big thing so first is to realize that news emotions and sentiment are really driving this market right now because it is so new and where do you get all this stuff? Usually social media, which brings me to my next point. This is from Fidelity Digital Assets. It's the Bitcoin investment thesis. 29 pages, very long, very dry, very boring. I'm going to break it down into two paragraphs. So first up, again, page 10. So let me scroll down there and ah, nail it. So they started to look again at what drives investments. And they turned to um, a Yale study, which was, which was conducted by economists Ali Tezavinsky and Yukun Lu, examined whether the returns of digital assets, especially Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP, behave like the returns of other asset classes. Here's what they found. They found that price and sentiment experience a self-reinforcing effect. The second factor that influences Bitcoin price is investor attention as measured by, check this out, Twitter post counts for Bitcoin and Google search data series, i.e. if Bitcoin mentions are high, the value of the asset will increase. So chicken or the egg, which one comes first? Well, as Bitcoin starts to really permeate the market, the actual price actually goes up crazy. So there's that part. Plus, there's another page down here. Let me just, oh, nailed it. They further elaborate. We're starting to witness an era of retail resurgence. That's me and you. The channels that retail investors rely on for financial info and advice are shifting to platforms such as Twitter, Reddit, Telegram, YouTube, and TikTok, also Theta, where information dissemination is much more viral and rapid than it is in traditional closed channels. The adoption of Bitcoin and crypto has been and continues to be driven by conversations taking place on the platforms, explaining the connection between Bitcoin performance, social media mentions discussed above. And as we find ourselves familiarizing with these channels, some of the attention will undoubtedly flow to Bitcoin and other digital assets. So again, the more news, the more sentiment, the more things we get into it, the more the price goes up because news and emotion really drives the market. So speaking of which, we had done an interview with Alex Maschioli and Josh Frank from the Thai, and we talked about their new platform called TTC or Trade the Chain. I signed up myself because I do not talk about things as channel if I don't use them and believe in them. And this is what's crazy. This is what I woke up to today. So there was an alert on my phone. Of course, I was sleeping at 12, 10 a.m. because I'm not a vampire. And it states, Binance will list easy find network on the innovation zone. I'm like, what the heck? I've never heard of that. No idea. So first off, I'm like, well, what happened at 12, 10 a.m. for this thing called easy? Well, I took a look over at CoinGecko. And again, today is the 23rd. So here's the 22nd. Let's go up. 22nd, 23rd. This is around 
12, 10 a.m. right here. It was a buck 70. If I would have been awake, which I wasn't, I would have invested just to try it out because look what happened. That's when it first got listed. Then I did this little sideways action for, oh, about an hour, maybe two, then three, then four. And here's what we got. Now we're at 264. Now we're at 325. Now we're at 392. Then it goes back down a little bit, but we're still at $3 as opposed to a buck 70. So in a very short amount of time, if I just would have been awake, I would have been okay. And that's not all. So while I was getting ready for my live stream in Theta, I missed this one as well. And of course the alert went off on my phone. I didn't catch it in time, but this one states, Finance list Audius. What the heck is that? Well, I took a look. Remember, this is 10 a.m. today for Audius. So took a look at CoinGecko, and here we are again. What do we got? Well, it was just listed. This is 856. It was at uh, four cents. And then let's go to 10 a.m. when the notification came out, because we can't really take a look at the other stuff. So 10 or 9 a.m. It's at 32 cents, 41 cents, 57 cents, and 84 cents. Then we're going down to 78 cents, and that's at 10.46. So I had a solid 40 minutes, and this is the thing. The institutional investors, the big money players, they're getting these same audits or these same notifications. And here's what's crazy. We're using the same data. We're not using the same platform, but the same data points. But if we go even further, yes, there was a little bit of a drop, but hey, 43 cents, hang out pretty good, 38 cents right here. So yeah, you could still make a little bit of a return on this one. Again, I'm not a trader, so this isn't really my big thing. However, it is quite tempting to do this type of stuff. How, and I will say this, uh, as a dollar cost averager, I think it's good for me just to see like if there's major dips or major increases going up, because maybe I could take a look at these announcements that are being thrown at me through alerts on my phone and go, hey, maybe this isn't a good time to put a bunch of money in the dot as I see that there's something going on or Cardano or Bitcoin or whatever. So here's the thing. If you look in the description of every one of my videos, there is now going to be a link. It's going to look just like this. And you can sign up for Trade the Chain. You use the link, you get 14 days, no questions asked return. If you don't like it, you just hate the color scheme, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just ask for the for your money back and I'll just give you money back. Easy enough. Now, if you want a little bit more in-depth things about what's going on, how the data is processed, how everything works behind the scenes, I pulled in Josh and Alex. And I did a longer interview with them. It's about 27 minutes. That's why this video is so long today. And you can check that out. If you want to, I'm going to play it right after this, but that is it for today. So let's jump in and have Josh and Alex explain the whole thing. All right, buddy. Welcome back to Digital Asset News, back to the office. So we're going to do a little, a quick continuation of Trade the Chanks. I know some people had a lot of questions, myself included. So uh, I've got two people here, Alex Mascioli from Bquant Institutional Investment and Josh Frank from The Tie who is uh, pretty much giving or sending out all the information that they have over to Alex's platform. So gentlemen, thanks for uh, coming back. Tell me what we need to know. Yeah, Alex, you want to give us a little a little start? <laughs> yeah, one of the things we did, uh, Rob, obviously just to recap uh, a little, what we did was we built out um, a very easy data sentiment uh, terminal for the everyday retail investor to take a look at, to be able to garner the data uh, and information that a lot of the institutional uh, hedge funds uh, in crypto are getting and using uh, to make their returns on their trading. Um, one of the things, you know, just from a point of history is that I, you know, partnered up with Josh. I basically begged him to say, hey, listen, guys, you're the institutional platform for data analytics. You're, you know, one of the elite in the space. Um, and we, ha we know some of the same crypto funds and same clients. Um, is there any way you guys would be willing to partner with me and kind of help build build a product for the retail guys? So that's that's what we went and, and did. And, and this literally just came out of beta mode uh, a short time ago. Um, and, and it's been right now the traction off the start's been good. But what I wanted to do was kind of have this real short video to have Josh, who's an expert in all types of data sediment when it comes to uh, the crypto analytics, kind of just go through and, and help answer your questions on, on where I may have some gaps. Yeah. And so, you know, kind of just, just building on the back of what Alex said. So Alex had used our institutional data platform before, had played around with it and knows that our data is, is powering hedge funds, managing billions of dollars that are actively trading crypto. And he's like, look, it's great that your clients can look at a million data points and try to figure out what to do with them. But one, that's just really unfair to the individual who doesn't have access to the same data, right? Especially in a market that's all about the democratization of finance. And, and two, 
just like, you know, even myself, I just want to be to know what to do. And how do we take all this data and all this information that you have and package it into like, hey, this is the most mission critical. Like if I am just getting started trading or if I'm even a little bit more advanced, like what what are the things that I should keep an eye out on? And let's take those into account and build them into the platform. And so the first thing that that came to our heads is so one of the big technology pieces that we have in place is we basically built this technology that goes out and crawls thousands and thousands of sources on the web in real time. Like we parse through news in Chinese, we parse through API documentations, SEC filings, court cases, lawsuits. And what our technology basically is able to do is identify the most critical market moving information in real time. And so the, the, the most critical thing, and we just released a lot of research with eToro on this, and you can actually go look it up if you search for eToro the tie. Um, we put out all this research on what actually moves the prices of cryptocurrencies. And the thing that has the biggest possible impact on the price of cryptos is actually exchange listings, when tokens get listed on exchanges. And we've seen time after time where a token will get listed on Coinbase or Binance or OKX or Huobi, and the price goes up by 50, 75, 100%. And Alex is like, my clients need to have that as fast as any of your clients have that. Um, and so as part of, you know, look, I said, look, hey, we can only offer this to a limited number of people like this can't, you know, we can't sell this, you know, a thousand, two, three thousand times. We need to limit the amount of people that, that can have access because the more people that have it, the less valuable it gets. Um, but basically what we did is we built technology into the platform that notifies our customers of exchange listings in real time and specifically on the largest, most important exchanges. Um, and so that was one part of it, right? It was, it was helping to notify people of these opportunities to make 20, 30, 40, you know, percent returns on just an individual signal. And kind of, you know, for, for just, you know, for comparison's sake, you know, we're charging like what? What are you charging, Alex? I mean, it's Alex's platform. I think it's ninety nine dollars a month, uh, or it's nine hundred ninety dollars annual, which I know is a fraction of what the hedge funds are paying. Yeah, and that's not even a one month um, yeah. for any of our clients. But the point being, if you're trading a thousand dollars, right? You know, and you're getting one signal a month that makes you forty percent. You're making four hundred bucks a month. You're four times your money on one signal. You know, in the case of this platform, you know, we're sending out. With listings alone, we're sending out partnerships and other big announcements. I think we're giving you guys like four or five or six signals a day. And yeah. so, you know, if you're making forty percent on one, imagine what you can make off of, of five or six different signals. And so that's just, but that's just a portion of what we built in this platform. The other piece is, is actionable sentiment analytics. Crypto is a market that's really void of fundamentals, right? When you're when you're thinking about and investing in a stock, right? You're looking at a stock's earnings, its revenue, and its dividends. But still, if people are really excited about the iPhone, the price of Apple will go up in spite of that. But in crypto, we don't even have those fundamentals, right? Bitcoin doesn't have earnings. It doesn't have revenue. It doesn't have dividends. And in a market void of fundamentals, the only thing and the biggest thing that moves the market is sentiment. And, right, and that's why we see, for example, Ethereum is, is so big. It's the second biggest cryptocurrency because of its community, because its community has grown so large, because there are so many people building on top of it, talking about it. And that's why Ethereum has performed better than other coins like EOS, or even Polkadot, which is now kind of an up-and-coming coin. So what we decided to do was take a lot of the actionable sentiment data that we have and distill it down at the simplest level to, hey, are a lot of people talking about something today? Is that number growing? What are the most discussed assets? And how positive are the, are the people on those assets? So what we basically helped Alex do with our data in his platform is, is basically bring him insights on what are the hottest tokens on Twitter right now? And so, for example, we can see right now Stellar's tweet Twitter activity is up 286%. Its price is up 7.25%. So being hot on Twitter doesn't necessarily mean that the price is always going to go up, but it means that the price is probably going to go up really high if people are positive or down, you know, down a lot if they're negative. And you can combine what, by, you know, you know, how many people are talking about something with how positive or negative they are. And it really helps you give a picture you know, on what's going on in the market. So that's kind of the background. And Alex, Feel free to chat. Yeah, no, absolutely. And 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 just interject also, you know, for the more experienced advanced trader, it's it's great. Rather than sitting around analyzing charts all day, you can actually just uh, look through the list of the coins that you're tracking, get the market sentiment. And if there's some outliers there, then you can go to the charts and go into a, a technical mode if that's your thing. But one thing I wanted to really say is that 
from me, if I was using the product uh, myself and, and hadn't brought it to market, and we do use it, I'm on the institutional side of things in crypto and we apply to use it, but is that I wanted to tie it all together with a community, no pun intended, Josh. But to tie it in with the community, so one of the things we did, we, um, we recently launched the uh, uh, Slack channels um, for the uh, subscribers. And um, not only does that allow you to get the alerts directly to your phone in real time, um, but it also has an open discussion area where everybody can trade, can share trade ideas, um, or even add and critique and improve our product uh, as we go forth. Yeah, and 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 a couple of things to add there. First thing to add is the fact that the alerts go to you at the exact same second they go to our institutional clients. There is zero latency. We are not giving a worse product. It is the same speed. So the second that we tell one of our clients that Coinbase is listed X asset, you guys will get notified of that same alert. So that's super important to note. The second thing to note though, is that for annual subscribers, not only do you get to engage in that community, but you also get to uh, we're going to have, I think, a, a mastermind every month where yeah. Alex is the most humble person, but he's also the most well connected. He knows Alex knows everybody from John Ajarian to Anthony Scaramucci to all the biggest mm-hmm. names to Roger Ver. He's got he's got the biggest network in the entire world. So for our annual subscribers, not only do you get access to this actionable intelligence platform, all of these signals, the Slack channel, the community, but you also get a- get access to. I think it's going to be once a month a call with some of the top people in the industry that are really walking through what's going on in the industry, where's the opportunity, what is the data, what is it telling us, and kind of how do we action off of that information? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's going to be a fabulous, uh, a fabulous thing. Sounds like a real insider's club. Okay, so here's the thing. So walk me through this real quick because I'm not a, I'm not a trader guy. I'm just not. I'm a dollar cost averager. So I was looking at this. I was like, I don't know why they're talking to me about it, but it does make sense when I actually went through it because I go, you know what? If I can see that there's some kind of action, let's say Ethereum gets pushed out, let's say there, there's some kind of hack somewhere, instead of me going in and saying, okay, I want a dollar cost average, I'm just going to pick a Sunday at one o'clock, set it in, forget it. But now that I have this information, maybe that's the day I want to get in and actually pick up a dip. So I get that. But teach me like it's five. Tell me how this all works, the alerts, and what else I should look for. And then also, um, there's some information you guys have as far as like the past history of calls that you've already had. So which one do you want to go through first? Yeah, we can do a, well, Alex, I know Alex has to hop off in a couple, so I can continue with you, but why don't we start on the spotlight page and Alex, I'll let you do a little quick run through and I'm happy to, you know, fill in any blanks on data that that you'd like help with. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, I I mean, on the spotlight data, what we did was we worked in um, very uh, basic metrics. We started off with the basic uh, metrics and kind of started uh, diving deeper from there. So we have the total market cap. Um, and we have your average daily sentiment, total tra- uh, trading volume, as well as total tweet volume. Um, and that's across Bic- uh, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, the big board, so to speak. There, there's That's 691 coins there. Yeah, that's that's it's a large spectrum to uh, a swath to analyze. And then from there, we went down to the hottest on Twitter over the last 24 hours um, and then the top price gainers over the 24 hours. And, you know, really with the hottest on Twitter, like Josh had mentioned earlier with XLM. Now, XLM tweet tweet actions up 286 percent. And, you know, we all know why that is. And that's because they're about to uh, support a new a new stable coin on their uh, platform. So things like that, um, as well as going into the top price gainers for the last 24 hours uh, and, and what that looks like. And then below that is the indicator for the most bullish coins and the most bearish coins based off the daily sentiment metric uh, from Thai data that's input into the uh, terminal. And, and something to keep in mind, so the way that daily sentiment score works is it basically looks at how positive or negative our investors about a particular asset uh, over the last 24 hours versus the previous 20 days. So what it, what, you know, one, one thing that's interesting is XLM is the best performer. It's got the second highest sentiment, 87, and its tweet volume is up 286%. The price is actually up 7.4%. You can see on the bottom there with the most bullish or bearish coins. What it's really doing is there's there, there are platforms out there that try to tell you like, you know, hey, XRP is more positive than Bitcoin, but what they don't do is they don't normalize the data. And what I mean by that is when you're trying to understand how positive people are about XRP, for example, 
you don't care if people are always positive about XRP. What you care about is when people are way more positive than they normally are, because everybody could always be positive about XRP, right? And so what you need to do is you need to normalize the data, right? Because we just care about trends and opportunities for when people are way more excited or way more kind of anxious or nervous or, or, or not happy about a particular asset. And that's what these scores take into account. You know, it's saying today with Nexus Mutual, right now, sentiment is 89 out of 100, which is, for anybody who's more statistical, close to three standard deviations from the mean more positive than it normally is over t today versus the previous 20 days. And that gives you a real indication that, hey, investors are super excited. So if you're, if you're, in, you know, if you're just you know, an everyday trader, maybe that's like, hey, let me go on Coinbase, see if I see a good opportunity to, to, to enter my position or whatever exchange. Or if you're a technical investor, maybe it's like, hey, let me combine that with looking at the charts. Or if you're more of a fundamental investor, it's like, hey, let me actually go on Twitter and let me search for XLM or let me search for Nexus Mutual and let me kind of see what the nature of the conversation is around that asset as well. I actually, guys, I have to hop. I actually hop to have to get on the call uh, here. So um, I will uh, I will catch you guys later, but um, see you. Okay, see you. So Josh, maybe we'll just continue on here. So tell me about, so the spotlight makes sense. Talk to me about one of two things, either for the coins or actually if you could walk us through for the different calls that you guys have made, because I've got up uh, Aragon, Cardano, E2. Yeah, why don't, we, why don't we go through, let's do the coins and let's finish up with the, with the, the signals, because I think that's the most exciting okay. um, piece, actually. So, so the, help me, yeah, help me out, because when I'm looking at this, like I get it kind of, but again, just help me uh, to see what I need to know. Yeah, so there's a few different features. The focus here is really on simplicity, right? You know, I don't want to, you know, I didn't want to give Alex, you know, 200, 300 different data points for his platform, because what I said was, look, while there may be value in all those data points, at the end of the day, all that we need to give to people is what are the most important metrics? Like we have so many metrics that we provide to customers, but, you know, we're kind of like iffy about them. We're like, yeah, if you combine them in different ways, maybe there's something there. But with Alex, he's like, all right, give me the five things that are the most important things for our customers to see. And so my two favorite metrics are the ones on the right. Uh, and they're relative tweet volume and relative trading volume. So can you sort by relative tweet volume there? Um, so relative tweet volume is the same thing we showed you on the original, you know, on, on that spotlight page. But it's basically showing you how many more conversations are there today versus, you know, uh, you know versus the 30-day average. And what we can see with a lot, of, a lot of the coins, actually, that are seeing those big spikes in conversations, certainly not all of them, but, but we see a, a lot of large moves. So, for example, Origin Trail which is seeing a 71% increase in conversations, is up 14.4% today and 4% over the last hour. If you look at the top stellar, which has that 286% increase in tweets, is up 7.25%. But the same thing kind of goes on the negative side. So if you see uh, with crypto.com, which is third on that list, yeah. the tweet volume's up 122%. But if you look, the 24-hour price change is actually down 8%. Um, so we can see that, you know, it's not necessarily always one way or the other, right? If people are negative about something, it may go down. And what we can see is daily sentiment score is actually neutral, but it's below 50, which means it's slightly negative. Yeah, and you can see we ha we've built these one-hour price projections as well. And what that takes into account is basically price volatility and sentiment. And it tries to predict forward the next hour with 90% confidence where the price of an asset's going to go. So we're basically saying we're 90% confident that with, with crypto.com, the price is either going to go down 4% or up 2% with an average of minus 1% uh, over the next 24 hours. And those scores are historically about 92% accurate. So what to me is a little bit more interesting is when that range shifts very highly positive or very highly negative. And that's kind of the case for Nexus Mutual here, right? Where it's between negative 0.14% and positive 1.89% and daily sentiment score is very bullish. Um, and to me, that means, hey, this may be an interesting opportunity to kind of take a look at Nexus Mutual. But the tweet volume is pretty low. You can see the average tweet volume is about 20. And today with an 82% increase means there's probably about 36, 36 tweets. And you said it was 90% it was accuracy. So like crypto.com, you're saying, okay, four to negative four, which probably is what, you know, it's probably going to go down to maybe plus 1.95. But the sentiment is neutral, but going below, maybe now it's at 48 so I mean, it, it may have been it may have been lower. I, I assume it was probably lower earlier in the yeah, day and it's kind of was. started to come back. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So that's how we kind of use those types of things. And then also there's a way to filter favorites. Yeah. So you just click that little star button yeah, and, and then you can we'll customize, customize the columns. 
So you can actually click hourly sentiment, click that metric uh, on the bottom there, right under sentiment data. Got it. Uh, And also click the daily sentiment momentum one as well. Okay. So daily sentiment momentum actually shows you um, the, uh, it shows you the um, 15 minute change in daily sentiment score. So it actually shows you how sentiment's changing. And we can see, for example, with Bancor, sentiment just became really positive. And that's also reiterated in the hourly sentiment score. So not only can you see the actual sentiment, but you can see the momentum on the sentiment. So how much sentiment is changing. Um, So this is also really interesting. Kind of like think of this as like your technicals a little bit for for sentiment trading, right? And so the way that hourly sentiment score works, it looks at sentiment over the last hour versus the previous 24 hours versus the, 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 the daily sentiment is 24 hours versus 20 days. And so what basically you can see is, you know, with the hourly sentiment score, is daily sentiment trending up or down, right? Because if hourly sentiment is really positive, that usually means daily sentiment is, is trending up. And you can see that reflected in that daily sentiment momentum metric as well. Gotcha. Anything else on this page we need to talk about? No, I think that's it, right? It's really, you know, what's trending, what's hot, what's not, right? And that's your, like, that's the perfect impetus for, hey, I should take a look at an asset and, and, and you know, potentially, you know, you know, Ooh. you know, think about allocating. And, uh, <laughs> They're just we just picked up a new exchange listing literally right now this minute uh, or or a, or a couple nine minutes ago actually, yeah. um, which is uh, wrap Bitcoin USD order box uh, books will soon enter uh, transfer only mode. But so the coolest part about this news these news panel this alert panel which is in app first thing is um, you can see on the top of your browser there it says one new which means you know that in the last ten minutes there was a new alert so if you're on a different browser you can go back. But the coolest thing isn't the yeah you know, did you get a new alert or not? The coolest thing is we are alerting you of exchange listings in real time. So the second something is hitting Coinbase or Binance or KuCoin or anything else, we're alerting you. But the really cool thing is oftentimes our real time is before there's even a tweet on the topic. So our technology is going out and it's crawling, for example, from the KuCoin blog or it's calling from their medium or it's crawling from their forum. So the second that they write a blog post that a new asset's being listed, we pick that up. And it takes time. Think about this, right? If you found a news story that you liked on the internet and then you wanted to compose a tweet to talk about that news story, it take you five, 10 or 20 minutes to write that tweet. Our technology is going out and hitting the news story before these companies even have time to write the tweets. So oftentimes we'll actually even find out about a listing before they've tweeted about it and before the rest of the market knows. And that doesn't happen all the time, but we've had, I think already since Trade the Chain launched in a couple of days, like three times where we've had exchange listings 20 minutes early. Um, and then the, you know, these, these exchange listings pop 10, 20, 30%. And you can walk through a couple examples here. Yeah. Well, I mean, not, I mean, not only that, but I mean, who's got time to look for all that stuff? I don't, I don't. And it takes a long time. So I can understand why people do it. And then also when we talk about alerts, it's not just being tethered to your, your browser, your computer, it comes through Slack. The alerts come this way, right? Yeah. Through you'll get phone. them on your phone. Right. And if you have Slack on your desktop, don't be afraid of Slack. It's very easy to use. We're happy to help you get set up with it. Um, but basically, it's like a messenger app, like iMessage or like your text messages on your phone. It's no different. Yeah, basically, that, anytime a listing hits pinged on your phone, that's it. And then you just, you, you know, you can go action on that event. So this would be like something that, here's the example that we're talking about, right? This was uh, the, the Argon project. It was listed on OKX. So this is something that would be notified on my phone via Slack before most of the people get it. I'm like, wow, if it's going to be on OKX, maybe I should take a look at that a little bit harder. That's what I'm uh, don't think. Yeah, and, and, and in this case, the price, there's actually three listings that we notified our users of. And you can see that two button is right before that big spike. And that was actually a listing on Binance and Huobi concurrently. So we notified our listings of these, uh, our customers of these three listings. The price went up by 186% or something like that uh, okay. within a 24 hour period. Tell me about um, this one. Yeah, here's another one. Um, you know, Cardano got listed on crypto.com. You can see this, this, this light blue line is tweet volume. The dark blue line is price. This listing event happened, and we saw this massive spike in both conversations around Cardano as well as price. Okay. And then he had another one. And this was, what day was this? May 28th, 2020? This was uh, Cardano again. Oh, no, Charles Hoskins reveals the launch date for the Shelly Net. Okay. And so similar thing, just in terms of thinking about how fast our system is picking up information, that's when we picked it up and alerted our clients. That's what happened to price. So you can see when we're getting the information out. That's yeah, the kind of the, you know, the point of this demonstration. Yeah. Same thing, knowing that Ethereum 2.0 is going to launch. And then boom, we had, you know, a, a, you know, a couple of days where the price went from 230 up to 280. 
Gotcha. And then this one was, oh, this was the IOTA, the Trinity hack. wallet hack. So this is, see, this is what, like, I, I think a lot of people who have the positions would probably be more interested in about getting out. And then I can see it here. So this is when you guys notified there was a hack. And then, okay, got it. And, but you can also see how fast we notified because the price actually was still going up for like an, an hour after we notified before anybody actually knew the hack happened. Mm. And that's something important to note is there are some times where these alerts could be so early and it's not always, it's not often, I wouldn't say that. Um, you know, I'd say maybe 20 or 30% of alerts we can get 10, 20, 30 minutes before, which is a huge, 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 massive advantage, right? Yeah. Um, but when we're able to get it before, I mean, there are some times where the price will keep going in the wrong direction because the market doesn't even know yet that this piece of information happened. The only people that know are our hedge fund clients and then anybody, you know, who signs up for Alex's platform. Yeah, that's the thing. And that, that was a video that we did uh, recently about the, the hedge funds. Like they have like a huge advantage over like, like the average Joe, right? But with this, I'm, I'm looking at this and it kind of like, well, it kind of gives, we're not going to be able to compete, you know, head to head with hedge funds. But if we can compete with a lot of other people, I think this would probably be a pretty good start. Well, the thing to keep in mind is that the hedge funds are setting these same alerts and getting the same information and they're going to be making the same types of trades, right? So you're getting it at the same exact time that they are. So that if information asymmetry, which existed before, is we've just closed that gap. Gotcha. Huh. Interesting. And then this one was, we'll, we'll just do a couple more. Uh, Kyber ecosystem report. Looks like it was very positive. 9th of June, 2020, May 29th. Maker uh, looks like uh, was launched on Coinbase Pro. That would be I mean, look at big. that. Look at that. I mean, you know, we picked yeah. that up like 15 minutes before Coinbase tweeted out that launch. And look, the price went down a little bit. And then it boomed from 340 to 460 in an hour or half an hour once people figured that out. So having access to that information, like, you know, our hedge fund clients were able to take advantage of that. But now, you know, you know, the, the, the limited number of users that, um, you know, Alex is, is, is going to allow onto his platform will have that same information. Yeah. And then OMG launching on Coinbase. This actually took a while. I can see a little bit of here and then kind of got picked up and then blah, 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 off we go. Okay. And then, but hey, as long as it goes in the right direction. And then Synthetics partners with Curve and uh, here's where the data. So it's all the same, the same thing. So and sense. I mean, something interesting to keep in mind here hmm. is part of this platform is sentiment as well. And the, the, the dotted blue line is tweet volume. And so you can see it's not just the price hmm. that's going up, but it's also the social conversation. And one thing that tweet volume allows you to see is what's hot, what's not. And there's usually a reason behind that. And we're kind of tying all three together, right? The price, the breaking news and the sentiment to give you a 360 degree view on what's actually happening in the market. Yeah, it only makes because I see, I see that this whole space is this is it's it's all about it's all being pushed by news sentiment, also by emotion. Uh, because there's no fundamentals, right? There's no there's no earnings. There's Bitcoin. You know, Ethereum is not going to announce their Q3 dividend, right? <laughs> but Ethereum could announce a new mainnet launch, or it could be announced that Ethereum is now tradable on Square, right? And when that happens, that's you know on the Cash App owned by Square, that's huge for Ethereum, right? That's opening up the door to millions of new potential customers, right? And so, so those are the kinds of things that, you know, can move crypto markets a lot more than they can move stock markets. Gotcha. All right, Josh, anything else for us? Is that pretty much the whole rigmarole? Yeah, I think that's the, you know, I wish Alex could have, uh, Alex is uh, talking at a really big company. So, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't take his time, time out of it. But uh, no, I mean, Alex has been great. Look, Alex does know everybody. He's the one that helped me like, you got, uh, you know, Roger Veer on the, on the channel. Help me out with that. Uh, Steve Ehrlich from uh, uh, Voyager. Uh, Alex Mashinsky from uh, Celsius. This guy seems like know everybody, which is good, but humble guy, nice guy. So uh, for everybody who's watching, that is the whole thing. Now, uh, you can sign up. There's going to be a link in the description below. Also, if for some reason it doesn't work out for you, Alex has already told me that uh, it's a 14-day, no questions asked refund. So if it doesn't work for you for whatever reason, you're like, I just didn't get it. Or I don't like it or whatever else. And then just ask for the refund and it'll be done. So 14 days to you for free just to check it out. Not a bad deal. I've got it myself. And I guess, I mean, for me, good for dollar cost averaging. If you are a trader, I think it might be indispensable. Anyhow, Josh, thanks so much for stopping by. And that is it for everybody. Thanks for having let's, me. Let's jump back. All right, so that's it. Links in the description. Uh, but before we take off, first of all, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. Also, I just want to do some random shouts. Everybody who signed up for Digital Asset News, really appreciate it. So first up, Five Felive, Sean Black, Ignacio Mela, David, Justin Ross, Doug Lemley, Vanessa Bunn? No, Bassanat Bunn. 
Jess Zadra, JCR Central, and Johnny Bitcoin. So everybody, thanks so much for signing up and watching the whole thing. If you like these types of videos, the tumor is going to pop up on your left and right. And I'll let YouTube do their magic with that. But uh, again, thanks. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Enjoy the weekend. And I'll see you on the next one.